Now, the good news, it may take me, somebody else, a year to get somebody's leaky gut sealed. Mm -hmm. I was naive when I started this. I said, "Ah, a couple of weeks, you'll be fine. (laughs) No. But the good news is once you seal leaky gut, we find that you become desensitized against most of these foods. In fact, I I gave a paper at the American Heart Association Lifestyle and Epidemiology meeting two years ago showing that 94% of people who had celiac disease and profound gluten intolerance in a year, 94% of them no longer had any antibodies to gluten. Their immune system literally was retrained that gluten was not an issue for them anymore. So, I mean, the, and we find that once you seal the gut by removing these things, and once you, you literally can retrain the immune system not to react to these substances. And that's why Uh, So many of my patients, if I can convince them that, yeah, I'm going to make you miserable and the foods I'm going to take away from you, but if we seal your gut, and most of the time we can, we'll get these things back into your diet and and it'll be worth it long term. Mm -hmm. Wow. So essentially the like testing for food sensitivities, given the fact that yes, the things that you eat show up in your diet, because of course, like you said, it passes through particles that are way too big. Your body doesn't understand it. It hasn't been broken down. So it's really just an indication of in your experience that lectins being probably the number one thing to eliminate, maybe it needs to be a little more specific as it goes, but that is the best starting place because the leaky gut is really just a, uh, the, it's the, it's the diagnosis, but it's not necessarily that your food What's sensitivity test can be your, your, your gold, like your, it's not your Bible to what to eat and what not to eat. It's just Correct. saying you have inflammation, you have, your gut is not operating properly. Things are seeping through. And yeah, if you have a diverse diet, you're going to see a lot of stuff on your test and, right. and okay. Interesting. That makes sense because, you know, I mean, in my experience, I had a lot, a lot, a lot of things on my, on my tests that were a level, level, le- red level high. Um, okay. You had said that you wanted to talk about vitamin D. Yeah. The vitamin D, is that a hormone as well? It is a hormone as well. In fact, okay. we should have named it as a hormone long ago instead of a vitamin. But okay. one of the things that I guess didn't surprise me, but maybe surprised me early on when, you know, and I've been working in this area for 25 years now, is that all of these patients who presented with autoimmune diseases, uh, just as a start, had very low levels of vitamin D. And, you know, I went, "Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Um, And then all of these patients with leaky gut have low levels of vitamin D. And so, yeah, so there's there's several important things. Um, So vitamin D is a hormone. I've never seen vitamin D toxicity uh, yet. Um, And I've been measuring vitamin D levels every three months for 25 years. Uh, I think a normal vitamin D level should be anywhere from 100 to 150. Uh, Even the Cleveland Clinic and Quest now say that vitamin D levels up to 150 are completely normal, not too high. And so I'll push my patients vitamin D levels up to 100 to 150. Sometimes we'll go higher. Vitamin D does two things. Um, we have, as, as the cells in the wall of our gut are, are hurt by these lectins and other compounds, there's a bunch of replacement cells, stem cells, that are ready to take the place of these damaged cells. It's kind of like the old Revolutionary War movies where you got lots of lines of soldiers and the first guys go down and the next guys step up, right? Right. Well, that second line has to be pushed into place by vitamin D. They sit there and twiddle their thumbs and go, what, am I supposed to do something? And it's vitamin D that pushes them into place. That's number one. Mm. Number two, we know that people with autoimmune diseases, their immune cells, their white blood cells, 
normally should be sensitive to vitamin D. Vitamin D basically says, hey guys, relax. Um, go have a donut and a smoke if we think of them as cops. Um, and that's not to generalize, but just cool it. Don't carry an Uzi around. Every, everything's fine. But we know that people with autoimmune diseases, their immune cells do not listen to vitamin D properly. So you basically have to literally hit them with a sledgehammer to quiet down. So it's this twofold effect. And uh, so almost all human beings should be on 5,000 international units of vitamin D or 125 micrograms. Any of my autoimmune patients, we start them on 10,000 international units. The University of California, San Diego, uh, one of the expert centers in vitamin D thinks the average American should take 9,600 international units of vitamin D a day to have an adequate level. The average American. They found and other people found that you cannot produce vitamin D toxicity at 40,000 international units a day. You're safe. <laughs> and you're safe. And I have some of my really tough autoimmune patients on 40, 50,000 a day. Um, that because of the bioavailability to their body of what they actually absorb and do something with? Excellent question. It turns out when you've got a leaky gut, you do not absorb it well. And long before we had measurements of leaky gut, I used vitamin D levels to decide when the gut was sealed. And so I'd be pushing, pushing, pushing vitamin D and I'd have somebody on 30,000 units and, and their vitamin D would be 50. And then on the next blood test, their vitamin D is, you know, 140. And I go, great, you know, we're there. Let's start backing down now. And it, it's actually been a very reliable uh, way. So you're right. People with leaky gut, you just can't absorb vitamin D well. And wow. once we seal you, then your vitamin D needs go down. Got it. That makes perfect sense. What are some other kind of hormones that are at play that are uh, big factors in overall health? Well, um, one of the things that I wrote about in the last book, The Energy Paradox, that I think people need to know is glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, is now omnipresent in our diet. It's in, and people, you know, we, we, we learned about Roundup with GMO foods and, mm -hmm. you know, Roundup was developed to, you know, spray soybeans and kill the weeds and the soybeans would die, blah, blah, blah. And so everybody thinks of Roundup as being sprayed on GMO foods, but, and 95% of corn in the United States is genetically modified, um, same with canola. But now what's happened in the last 10 years is that Roundup is no longer just being used on GMO crops. It's now being used on conventional crops as what's called a desiccant. Uh, these large corporations have to bring these multi-million dollar harvesters to a field on a certain day to be efficient. So rather than wait for the field to ripen and dry, they kill the plants with Roundup and then they die and then they're dry. And so they basically say, okay, you know, field in Iowa number seven is, we're gonna have the harvesters there on next day, spray it with Roundup so we can harvest it. And so nobody's sitting around washing the wheat or the oats or the corn of Roundup afterwards. They, they don't have to declare it. And so it's fed to our animals. It's fed to us. Almost all grains in the United States are contaminated with Roundup. Almost all vineyards in the United States are sprayed with Roundup to keep Mine's them. clean, organic. Yeah. We're organic. Very I do good. Wine. Bless it's organic. you. Yes. And, uh, you know, but in, yeah. Europe, in Europe, and it's, you know, it's hard to get uh, organic or biodynamic wine in the United States, and bless you for doing that, uh, because, uh, you know, most of our wines are contaminated with, with Roundup. Now, why should we worry about that? Well, it turns out that glyphosate is sadly now known to actually cause intestinal permeability, leaky gut. 
without doing anything else. Mm -hmm. And Roundup is, Roundup was patented as an antibiotic. Glyphosate was patented as an antibiotic. Was it ever administered as an antibiotic first before it became something they sprayed on? Okay, wow. But it's considered an antibiotic. Yeah, it's 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 shows actually, what antibiotics do. Exactly. And so one of the things that they assured us was that don't worry, Roundup is not absorbed and it can't kill you because you nice people don't run what's called the shikimate pathway. And that's a really fun word, the shikimate pathway. Sounds and fun. yeah, but but plants use the shikimate pathway. What they didn't tell us was that our bacteria in our gut use the shikimate pathway. And that's how they patented it as an antibiotic, but they didn't bother to tell any of us. So every time you eat a Roundup sprayed grain or bean or corn, you're inadvertently killing off your gut microbiome and causing mm -hmm. leaky gut even though you're very fastidious about you know, choosing things.